Okay, in this video today we're going to talk about how do you go from a Pi GSAS or GSAS2 refinement, let's say you're done and it looks something like this, how do you go from that to a figure that's ready for publication? Publication figures might look something like this. Maybe you've got multiple panels. In this case, two of the panels were done with copper radiation, one was done with cobalt, and so those the angles are not going to be in the right spot, so we've converted them into Q-space so that they line up in the right spot. We've also shown where the different phases are if it's a multi-phase mixture. And we can see other examples of this in literature, right? Take this example. They're showing X-ray data and neutron data right alongside of each other, and they're able to show the phase that's present with these tick marks. That's where you expect to see peaks. They're showing the difference curve, the data versus the fit. It's just a really nice way to show this data. So how do we convert this over, right? Well, there's a couple steps. First off, in your uh, data tree of your PyG SAS, we're going to go ahead and export the data. So you're going to go to export. We're going to export the powder data as and a CSV file, right? So I'm just going to save this to my desktop. We'll call it demo for right now. Okay. The next thing we have to export is the uh, reflection list, right? We want to take note of where the reflections were for the different phases. So we're going to reflect. We're going to export that as well. A reflection list. Okay. Now that we have that. We're going to be able to go ahead and convert this to Q space and then plot it in something like Qt Grace. Let's do that. Okay, you'll notice the first thing it gives us, it gives us the x position, that's in terms of 2 theta, right, currently. It gives us the observed y, the weight, the y calculated, and then the background, the y the background. So we're going to change a few things. First off, we don't need the weight. Instead, we're going to want the difference between the calculated and the observed. This is easy to do. So it's going to be equal to that minus that. We're going to do that all the way down, the observed minus the calculated, right? Now next up, let's go ahead and change a few things. Instead of plotting things as a function of 2 theta, let's convert it to Q space. Q is equal to 2 pi um, divided by d. Or in other words, it's 4 times pi times the sine of theta divided by lambda, our radiation wavelength, right? So let's go ahead and punch that in. We're going to say that this is equal to 4 times pi times the sine of this value divided by 2, make it theta. And now sine by default in Excel is in radians, so we need to turn that into degrees. So we're going to multiply that by pi and divide that by 180. Now we're not quite done. We also need to divide this by the wavelength, which in this case it was cobalt radiation, so our cobalt k-alpha radiation is 1.78901, right? Now we've got a value, we can send that all the way down. Okay, now it's in Q-space. Um, we won't need 2 theta anymore, so instead of just getting rid of this, since this value depends on it, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this, and we're going to paste it special, and we're just going to paste the values over top of that first column. Now that lets us get rid of this column, and we're ready to go. We've got our Q value, we've got our Y observed, the difference, calculated, and background. Before we go ahead and import this into our plotting program, let's go ahead and make sure that our um, reflections list is also in Q space. So over here, this is our reflections list. There were two phases that we refined, right, in our quantitative phase analysis. There was cobalt O and cobalt 304, right? The first phase is rock salt, the other one is spinel. These are plotted in 2 theta and not in Q space, so we need to convert those to Q space. That's easy to do, we know how to do that. First, let's grab them, give ourselves a little room over here to work with. And again, we know it's equal to 4 times pi times the sine of this value divided by 2 multiplied by pi divided by 180. And then divide that by the radiation wavelength, 1.78901. Okay, that is now in Q space. Let's grab those and also plot them over here. Okay, we're in good shape. So now we've got our um, our Q space for our reflections. We're gonna give it an intensity. I'll show you why in a minute. We're gonna make these one for just a moment. Uh, let's just do it all the way down. Okay. I'll show you what we're going to do with those in just a moment. First off, we're going to grab these values, and we're going to open up Notepad. Notepad, because that's going to make it easier to import this into the plotting software. We're going to plot them. We're going to save this as rock salt. So desktop, this will be cobalt oxide, 
oxide.dat. Change the file type from text to just a .dat type. We're going to save it. Yes, we want to replace our previous file. We're going to do the exact same thing with our Cobalt 304. We're going to grab that data. We're going to replace everything here with this. We're going to save it now as, again, instead of a .txt, we're going to do a .dat, and we're going to do a Cobalt 304.dat. Replace the one that's currently there. Okay, now our data is ready to go. We shouldn't need these. Let's hang on to them anyways. Okay, we're going to go ahead and plot now. So open up Qt Grace. Um, Qt Grace is what I like to plot things in. It does a great job and it's totally free. It's awesome software. So go ahead and open up your file. Um, I have a template file that I like to work from that I can send people via email if you'd like to use it. Otherwise, you can make your own any way you'd like. My template file, here's my blank XRD file. Open it up. And here we go. We've got room for the main body as well as we've got room for the different phases to mark where we expect peaks at. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import data. Let's import data to the first uh, section first. That's from our CSV file. Now we need to select the CSV file. It was in our desktop and it was located right here. It was this one, right? Now you'll remember that here's our header. We did have a header file, right? We don't need to import these things. We just need the numbers below. So the first thing you need to tell is to ignore the first line because that's a header line. Second thing is that the columns are not separated by semicolons, they're separated by commas. So change that to comma and have it reguess. When you do that, it's going to know that there are now five columns of data, which is great. And by default, it assigns to all data sets the x value is equal to this first column. That's great. It's Q. We want Q to be plotted everything against Q, so that's wonderful. Um, the next thing is that the next data set, which will be our observed value, that goes to the data set 0. The next column is the difference. That goes to data set 1, then 2, and 3, and so forth. So this thing's done. It's ready to go. We can hit accept. And there we go. Plot it as Q space from 1 up to about 5.5. We have our data. The difference curve down here in red. The yellow looks like our background. The blue looks like our data. Black might be the calculated. We're going to adjust those in a minute. Meanwhile, up here, let's go ahead and insert the positions where we expect data, right? We're going to do that by going to import, and we're going to import ASCII data this time. So we need to tell it where it's at. Um, it's this one right here. Let's add, let's do cobalt oxide first. The key thing here is don't import it as XY data. We want it as bar data. We want a bar plot because we want basically Q values to change, right, at different two positions. We want just a bar. We don't want a data point. So we change it to bar type, and you can go ahead and import it. Um, now let's go to this one and import cobalt 304 in the exact same way, also as a bar. OK, those are ready to go. Now they don't look quite right. We're going to adjust those in a minute. It's OK. So the, I'd say the first thing we should do is let's pick an x-axis value for this, right? So on over here, um, you can either double click on the axis itself, and it'll pull it up, or you can come up here to plot and select um, axis properties. But in either case, what should we plot this from? Looks like instead of from 0 to 6, let's go from 1 to maybe 5.5 in terms of our Q space. Okay, And then we want to do that for all of our plots. This one is going to go from 1 to 5.5 as well. And this one also going from 1 to 5.5. Oops, left a mark there. The other thing with these ones while we have them open is let's change their y-axis from going from 0 0.5 to 2. Let's have it go from 0 to 2. Remember, we plotted these in terms of uh, just we gave it just an intensity of 1. This is going to make that bar occupy the entire space. See that right there? It just filled the entire space. Let's do it on this one as well. We're going to plot this from 0 to 1. So our bar chart just looks like a solid line there. Okay. So now we've got our two lines. Let's make sure that one is the right x-axis. Yeah, 1 to 5.5. Great. So our x-axis is correct. We can go ahead and save this in case we want to change something. This will have us good to go. Um, I'm just going to put this as demo.agr. Anytime you save in Qt Grace, it's a .agr file. Okay. It says, hey, would you like to override? We don't want to override that. We want to save this as a new file. Let's try that one more time. Oh, I see. Right over here, I put that in the wrong spot. XRD blank. Let's change this to demo.agr. There we go. Okay, now it's a demo.agr file. We've got that data. Now, the only thing I uh, do left is we could add a legend. We could add some labels on this. We could get rid of these numbers. 
and we can change whether we're lines versus data points. Let's start with lines versus data points. When you're plotting data versus a fit, data should have data points, whereas a fit can be just a solid line. We know this first one is what? That's the first data set over here. That's our observed value. So those are actual data. So let's make those markers, right? Let's give it circle markers. Now that's too big. Let's make those smaller, maybe even like that small. Choose a nice color for it. We're going to get rid of the line. We're going to have no line there, right? And you can choose a, a color that you like, right? Right. If you wanted to, right now these are just uh, circles and they're not filled. You can adjust the fill if you'd like. Let's say the pattern, we want it to be a filled pattern. And instead of being a dark blue filled pattern, let's say we wanted to do a white fill. Now the data points are going to be filled. That's one option if you like, right? You can hit that apply. Now the second data set, what's the second column that we brought in? That's the difference curve. That's calculated because it comes from the calculated. So we're going to do a line there rather than data points. So it's currently set to have no data points. That's fine. But it's set to have a line. All we have to do is change the color to something for like the difference curve. Typically, I use like a gray down there. So we're going to have a gray down there. Um, we could change more things if we want, but let's move on. This is going to be now the third column over, right? That's our calculated values. So there, uh, the current is cur the color is currently set to that uh, Neptune color, and that looks great to me. I think we can go ahead and keep that. And then the last column is going to be our uh, background, and it's set to pumpkin. So let's make that red. Let's use a nice red color for our background. You could change the stroke, obviously, if you wanted these things thicker or not. This is all easily adjustable, but there we go. Now let's give these things some labels. This is our background. Up here, our third one, this was our um, calculated or the fit. This is the difference. Oops. And the first one was data. Um, or experimental, we can call it. All right, there we go. Now it's ready to go. If you wanted to, you could move this data right down here to its own separate box, the same way that we've done up there, and you can make it smaller if you wanted. I think it's fine to just leave it like this. Um, looks like we're missing one thing here. It looks like our, let's see, our observed values, let's see, our observed value, experimental values here, it has no line. Second one is the difference, it only has a line. Third one is the calculated, ah, I see. The calculated has the same color, Neptune. Let's change that and make it something like pumpkin. We're not showing it. Ah, there we go. Now it's correct. So now you can see on the data set, you've got the line where we calculated peaks. The red is our background. Notice that we included some of our peaks as background from the sample holder. That's okay to do. So that thing's ready to go now. The last thing we could do is we could add labels for these if we wanted up in this plot. We can go ahead and double click on this. And then we can select a different map. We could give this a name. This could be the cobalt oxide phase, right? We could do the same thing up here. We could give this the cobalt 304 phase. Now you'll notice when we do that, those show up overlapping, and that's not what we want. So we can move those. Over here under Graph Appearance, we can go to Legends, uh, Legend Box, and we can change the location of those Legend Box. Right? Let's actually move it, um, let's move it over to 0.85. That's going to be off to the right, right. Actually, it's a little bit too far. Let's just move it to point maybe 0.81. And we want that to be higher. We want it to more or less match where the other one's at. So I think that's at something like 0.8 maybe. Oh, a little bit taller, 0.83. Okay, that's up there. We're gonna get rid of the markers in just a moment. Let's do the same thing with this data set. We're gonna move its box over to 0.81 and 0.8. That will move our cobalt oxide over there. Again, to get rid of those little boxes on the markers over here, we're gonna select this box and we're going to um, get rid of the, let's see, oh, it's set to marker. Let's reduce that to zero. 
I think we'll actually delete that afterwards. Um, we can make that not show up, but I think it'll be easier if we just don't show it at all. So we'll, we'll delete that when we uh, do this in a moment. Um, so again, one more time, let me get rid of those markers on that. We're gonna go up here, select that, and for that one, we're going to get rid of our markers. Okay. Um, last thing is, let's add some labels to this. We don't need any y-axis uh, labels, actually, right? The tick mark, since this is um, since this is diffraction, it's in, it's arbitrary units. So you could put intensity, and you could put um, AU for arbitrary units. That would be okay. Um, but typically, I get rid of these numbers altogether. So for the tick labels, um, let's go ahead and get rid of the tick labels, right? That way can, they can see the relative change, but the numbers actually don't matter. Meanwhile, for the x-axis, we should label this in Q-space, right? So we can say that this is equal to Q, and the units are going to be inverse angstroms, right? So we can say um, angstroms, let's just put to the negative one, and in Illustrator, we'd make the final change to make that a correct exponent. Okay, now again, we'll, we'd correct that in Illustrator but this is essentially ready to go. We would delete these things out and just move these labels over. We'd fix all the subscripts, but this is now a nice plot. The only thing else that you might consider adding is what your weighted residual was from the refinement. Okay, hope this has been helpful.